Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about my top 15 foundations. I really, really tried to make this a top 10. It wasn't happening. Top 15, and I still feel like I could have made it a top 20. But anyway, top 15 foundations, and uh, I have not done this in a while. And when I do talk about foundations, I do feel like I talk about the same ones, you know, my favorites or whatever, all time favorite, like luxury makeup. I talk about the same ones a lot. So you're going to see definitely some familiar faces here, but there are a lot of new ones that have become my favorites since the last time I made this video. So let's go ahead and start. This is in no particular order. I also was thinking about like ranking these. That's not going to happen. So in no particular order, I have them all sitting in a box here. So I'm just going to reach over and grab at random. And we're going to start with, ah, so this is uh, a newer one and one that you would not have seen in any of my lists previously. This is the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream Foundation. Uh, they reformulated this and this is in shade B10. And I just recently purchased this off of Nordstrom and you know, I wasn't sure about my shade and I usually am O20, but I've been feeling and have been very, very pale lately. So uh, B10 actually works very well for me. Anyway, I'm mentioning all this because if you use me as a shade reference or comparison, I just want to let you know. Anyway, the foundation is gorgeous. It has such a beautiful, creamy, creamy consistency, which I really enjoy. And it has probably a little bit more coverage than foundations that I usually gravitate towards that are like in my comfort zone. This foundation has very easily a light medium to medium coverage. And if I just don't use that much, it spreads out very, very evenly and I can achieve like a light medium coverage. So I do love that versatility about it. Um, it does have SPF 25 in there and that is also very helpful. I cannot remember if it's chemical or physical sunscreen. I will leave it down below in the description box. I hope I remember, but I'll try and remember to leave it down below in the description box. Um, but it's SPF 25, which is great. I mean, I put SPF on, I don't depend on the SPF in a foundation, but it doesn't hurt, right? And what I love about the SPF in here, because I've run into some issues with other foundations where they oxidize, it's usually the SPF ingredient in there that does that. This doesn't oxidize, it doesn't change shades, it doesn't deepen up, like nothing. The SPF doesn't affect anything. It's just such a beautiful foundation. It's It wears really, really well. And it, yeah, it just has like a slight kind of like softening effect to my skin, almost like there's a softened filter over my skin. So this is definitely one that I have been very, very much enjoying. And I wasn't the biggest fan of the previous version. There's just something a little bit more... I don't know, elegant about this particular version of this foundation. Um, I like it much more than the previous one, personally. Um, so that's the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream Foundation. Okay, just sticking my hand in here. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the Chanel Le Beige uh, Water Fresh Tint. This has probably shown up in uh, a few of my like favorite foundation uh, videos. I have it in the shade Medium Light, and it almost, I feel like, a couple of shades, like a range of shades in this product would probably work for you because it is so light. This is definitely one of the lightest coverage foundations that I have, um, but this is, it, there's just something so smoothing about this. And I remember when I first got this, it is very, very thin, watery. The pigment of the foundation are in these pigment beads that you have to break up. And it almost looked like almost like nothing on the skin. And I thought, wow, this is really like, even for me, I was like, this is really, really light coverage. But I think, you know, instead of actual like pigmentation coverage, this just has, again, kind of like a smoothing effect uh, because of the texture of this actual water fresh tint. It's just really, really smoothing, almost like, like you put pantyhose over your face. It like perfects your complexion in a completely different way. Instead of like just covering everything up with like color and pigmentation, it really just sort of smooths everything out. It's such an interesting, unique formula and I really, really love it. And I do know people use this as a primer. I can totally see it. Again, it does that kind of like smoothing and there is a little bit of coverage. So yeah, I would imagine that this would work as a great primer. I only use it as a lightweight kind of coverage foundation. And now that spring, summer is coming, this is definitely going to be coming out to play <laughs> a lot more. Uh, so that's the Chanel Water Fresh Tint. 
Next, ah, we have the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Sunscreen. This has SPF 30 and it is a mixture of physical and chemical sunscreen. And I use the shade Gotland, which is light 1.2. And well, if this tells you anything, this is the one foundation, right? Yeah, this is the one foundation I brought to New York and I did put it on a couple of days. Most of the time I was there, I wasn't doing anything. So I wasn't putting makeup on, but the few times that I did, I did put this on and it's really just, it's very, very beautiful. It goes on the skin beautifully. It wears well. It has like a light medium buildable coverage to medium. And there is a little bit of radiance. I have very dry, sensitive skin. So I don't mind um, a foundation that has a little bit of radiance to it. And I don't feel like it's a radiance that got worse or, you know, it didn't get more radiant as the day went on, which is the case with a lot of foundations. This didn't. It really kind of maintained its level of radiance all throughout the day, which was really, really nice. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's like one of those like easy kind of uh, base products. I like to use a brush, but you could definitely just kind of throw it on with your fingers. It's, yeah, it has a creamy texture and it's, yeah, it's just really, really lovely on the skin. So that is the pure radiant tinted sunscreen. Okay, next, ah, next we have Charlotte's, uh, Charlotte Tilbury, Charlotte's, like I know her, Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation, no, Charlotte Tilbury's Beautiful Skin Foundation. Uh, this is a newer one, would not have appeared in any of my previous favorite foundation videos. I have it in the shade two neutral and I love this foundation. This is another foundation that's like a light medium, medium coverage and it is just gorgeous. It wears really well. The shade remains consistent. The level of radiance uh, remains consistent. It's not super radiant, but it's not, um, it's more radiant than just like skin-like. And it's, yeah, it's just really, be I'm gonna be saying like a lot of the same things for all of these foundations because they are my favorites, but this one really is beautiful. It makes your skin look very, very beautiful. It has some decent coverage without looking makeup-y. It is, like it has like a blurring effect and it's just, it's very perfecting. And I love that about this. So yeah, that is Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. Ah, we have another NARS. I just wanna say, I have not always been a fan of NARS foundations. Um, even ones that are meant for dry skin or ones that have like a lighter coverage, for some reason they haven't always worked for me, whether they don't wear well or, you know, whatever the case is, I just have never really had great luck with NARS foundations until these two. So the Pure Radiant Tinted Sunscreen and then this Light Reflecting Foundation. Now that I have the proper shade, uh, which is L2 Mont Blanc, I was trying L4. And even when I had the wrong shade, I could tell that the foundation was incredible. It, it was the wrong shade, so it just didn't look right on my skin. But this um, L2 shade is perfect for me right now. And it looks so beautiful on the skin. This foundation has uh, like a medium coverage, but it's almost like the Clay de Peau, where I feel like if I just use just a little bit, I can get like a light medium coverage and it spreads so evenly. It's just, yeah, it's really, really flawless. So this is a foundation that I definitely reach for if I'm gonna be going out because it is also very long wearing. Um, and if I really want like, you know, more of like a glam kind of finished look with like some decent coverage, this is definitely a foundation I've been reaching for. It's, yeah, it's just really, really lovely. And it has skincare properties in there. It, it's just great. So I'm so glad I have the proper shade now, which is L2. Okay, five down, 10 to go. Jeez, this may be a long video. All right, oh, next we have Westman Atelier. This is the one stick foundation that I have in here. And I have, actually I have several shades. Atelier one is the one that I reach for uh, mostly, but I also have two, I'm holding three, which is definitely too deep for me now. This is maybe, yeah, in the dead of summer, this may work for me. But anyway, Atelier one is the one that works for me. Now this foundation, I felt like I had to try it a few different ways. Sometimes uh, foundations just right out of the bottle, I put it on and it's like magic. And then sometimes there are ones that I have to work with a little bit more. And once, you know, I've cultivated the relationship, we've bonded a little bit, 
it's like it really, really just it sings. The, the foundation just looks so beautiful. So with this foundation, the first time I tried it, I just put it on, you know, over my skincare and put a primer down and it was OK. But it, I felt like there were spots that looked dry and then there were spots that looked very radiant. So it just seemed like I needed to do a little bit more with like my skin, maybe even it out a little bit more. So I actually spoke to actually, let me amend a friend of mine actually spoke to uh, a woman at the Westman Atelier counter uh, when they had one at Barney, <laughs> when they had one at Barney's. And she said a great primer to this foundation is the lit up highlight stick in lit, which was the original shade. That was the only shade that they had when uh, Gucci Westman launched her line. And she said, just kind of spread that all over, you know, like put a few streaks on your face and then just kind of like, you know, use that as a primer basically. So once I used uh, that lit up highlight stick as a primer or, you know, kind of any other primer that was uh, like the Bobbi Brown vitamin and rich face base, which is a moisturizing primer, but it's not greasy. It's not radiant. It just, I don't know, just kind of smooths your face. It adds like a little layer of like cushion to your skin. This foundation looks incredible. It was like night and day between just putting this on over my bare skin and putting it on over like a little extra layer. So it did take me a little while to like learn how to use this foundation. Uh, but once I did, I love it. This is a wonderful stick foundation. Okay. We've got the Shantikai Future Skin Cushion Foundation. I have it in the shade Vanilla, which I feel like may be a little bit too deep for me at this point. It's hard to tell in a cushion. Um, but yeah, this generally works for me, which makes me think it's probably a little bit too deep for me right now. Anyway, this cushion foundation is incredible. It is very softening, very smoothing. And it's one of those foundations that I feel like has some decent coverage, like it's a medium. Um, but it doesn't look uh, heavy. It doesn't look like you have high coverage on your skin. It is really, really flawless. So that's the Chantecaille, uh Future Skin Cushion Foundation. And while I'm talking about cushions, I do know I have another cushion in here. This is the Sisley, the Fito Blanc Le Cushion. And I have it in the shade 0C Vanilla. And Sisley's shade range is just not good. So this is a zero and I could definitely go a little bit lighter. I feel like I can pull this off, but I have very similar things to say about these two cushion foundations. They both have like a medium coverage. I feel like uh, you can shear them out a little bit. You can build them up a little bit. They wear well with primer, without primer, like they're very, very versatile. Um, and they, yeah, they do this really lovely, like skin softening, uh, kind of like blurring kind of effect to your skin. They just, yeah, they just do a lot of perfection and a lot of coverage without looking heavy or makeup-y in any way, shape, or form. The only thing Sisley I think has over the Chantecai, and really not by much because the wear time for Chantecai is very decent, but this Sisley cushion is actually very long wearing. Like it stays put. I remember wearing this with a face mask, None of it wore off. I remember I did a wear test. I was really surprised at how it just looked exactly the same at the end of the day. Like the Chantecai, you could tell at the end of the day, like a little bit around the end of my nose, which is typical. It wore off a little bit, but the Sisley was very long wearing. So I did want to mention that. Um, and yeah, so these are the two, yeah, these are the two cushions that I wanted to mention. Okay. Ah, so we are now at the foundation that I actually have on. I don't, I don't know. I don't wear this foundation often, probably because I'm always testing out foundations. I don't wear a lot of my makeup all the time because I'm always testing stuff out, but this is a foundation that I've talked about for many, many years now. And again, it is what I have on my face. It is the Kogan Do Moisture Foundation. And they did, I don't know, it recently kind of reformulate this. I want to say over the past year or two, they reformulated this. Um, I have two shades. I have shades 113 and 123. 123 is way too deep for me now. So I have 113 on and I feel like it's a good match. This foundation is, first of all, very long wearing. I don't know if you guys know anything about Kogan Do, but I believe it was started by um, an actress or someone who worked on movie sets as a makeup artist, or maybe there was a team. Anyway, they are involved in the movies. And so uh, the makeup that they create 
really has that in mind. And so they want, especially for foundations, their goal is to create foundations that are long lasting under the, the strong lights, under those long days of like movie shoots. And this foundation is all of those things. It is very long wearing. It has a gorgeous kind of natural radiance. I have highlight here, but you can maybe see it on my forehead. It just has this beautiful, smooth, pearly sheen. It's not too shiny. It's not greasy looking. It's this like, like amped up skin like finish to the foundation, but it doesn't get more radiant. It doesn't wear away. It's just such a gorgeous foundation. I would say this has a light medium, medium coverage, kind of like the clay de peau, kind of like the NARS, but there's something even more refined uh, with its coverage versus the NARS or the clay de peau. Like you definitely get some coverage. You definitely get some perfection to your complexion. Wow, that rhymes. Perfection to your complexion. But um, yeah, it's even less makeup-y than those two that I just mentioned. Gorgeous. This is, I really can't rave about this foundation and I don't wear it enough, but yeah, I just love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. So that is the Kogendo Moisture Foundation. And again, I have it in the shade 113. And well, I have a box in here. <laughs> Let me just pull this one out. This is the Lisa Eldridge uh, Seamless Skin Foundation. And it's got this uh, funky bottle that does not stand up. It does lay down, but it doesn't stand up. So I do keep it in its box. So I have it in the shade seven, which is perfect for me. And this, much like the Westman Atelier, I feel like this is a foundation that I had to, you know, develop my relationship with. I had to bond uh, with it. And for me, because I do have um, drier skin, skin that has like a little bit of texture here. I definitely have texture between my eyebrows. This is definitely a foundation that I have to use a primer with. If I don't use a primer with this, like a really nice cushiony primer, like the Vitamin Rich Face Base, like the Victoria Breckham Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer, like something like that, like a real cushiony, moisturizing, smoothing kind of primer. This foundation is glorious. It is uh, long wearing. You don't need a lot. I mean, Lisa Eldridge actually designed the pump so that not a lot of foundation would come out with one pump. And thank goodness, because like one little dot of this foundation, I feel it covers an entire cheek. It really, like a little bit goes a long way, like really seriously. And for me, I like using this with like a light medium coverage. It is definitely buildable because it is so like high coverage. It's so little bit goes a long way. Um, but if I just, if I just stick to that little bit and I, Oh, I just get this like really beautiful, very skin-like, very, very skin-like. There really isn't much radiance to it, but it makes my skin look really it, seamless. It makes my skin look very, very seamless. But like I said, this is definitely a, a foundation that I had to learn how to use. All right, what have we got here? Oh, okay. This is a foundation I've talked about a lot. This is the Bobbi Brown Longwear I'm sorry, Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation SPF 15. It's full coverage, quote unquote, oil-free shine control. Now, I remember when I first uh, started using this and I was like, full cover, oil-free shine control. I was like, this is not my kind of foundation. I, I don't like full coverage. I don't have oily skin. I don't have much shine to control. In fact, I like, you know, foundations that become radiant, but this does not have a full coverage. It can, but again, like many of these, it's very versatile. So long as I don't use a ton, I can use like a nice amount and I get like a light medium coverage very easily, very, very easily. Um, Oil-free shine control. This basically just has like skin-like finish and it is very, very consistent throughout the day. This is another foundation that is very long wearing, never rubs off on the mask. If you're gonna have like an 18 hour day, this one, this is a great, great foundation. And I have the shade Sand number two, and this beats out, I'm trying to think of like some other really long wear foundations. Well, I used to love the Dior Forever until they reformulated it, so we're not gonna talk about that. Um, the Lancome, the, um, you know, the, the one that's known for its super long, oh my God, what is it called? Anyway, the Lancome foundation that like people love and rave about. I think I love the Bobbi Brown just a little bit more because the shade works better for me. This is incredibly, incredibly long wear. If you're gonna have like a 15, 18 hour day, I would definitely recommend this. Um, it is very, very weightless. The 
uh, formula of the foundation is on the thinner side. It's not super creamy like the Clay de Poe or like Charlotte Tilbury's Beautiful Skin. It is uh, on the thinner side and I like the versatility of uh, the level of coverage that you can get. And it's hard for me to say whether or not there's like shine control because I don't really have oily skin, but this is Probably, I'm trying to think, out of all of the foundations I'm going to talk about, probably the most consistent in its wear. I mean, it, you know, the Sicily cushion as well, but this just, it just looks the same all day, all day. So if you have, yeah, like a long day, like I said before, if you have a long day, this is definitely a great one to reach for. Okay. The Dior Air Flash. <sighs> This is a great one. So this has, it's water resistant as a 12 hour wear. This definitely has a long wear to it as well. And I have it in the shade 2W. I don't think that's my shade. Um, I think they only had 2W. I would like to try 1N, but this has coverage. This really has coverage. This probably has the most coverage right off the bat. Again, it's hard to say because you can thin out foundations, blah, blah, blah. Um, but this is very, very perfecting. And this makes your skin, this gives you like mannequin skin. It gives you like super smooth. It kind of just like blanks everything out. Like this is a foundation, again, I you know, I don't reach for this that often. It has a very specific purpose in my mind. Like if I really want to do like a full, full on makeup look, actually, when I tell you this, this will explain everything. This is the foundation I wore to drag on. It really just like, if you want to contour out and like do lots of things, <laughs> do lots of things to your face, do a full beat. This is a fantastic, fantastic foundation for that. Long wear, I don't think it's as long wear as the Bobbi Brown. I don't think it's as long wear as the Sicily. I actually have not worn this in a while, but it is decent for sure and Oh, it really is. It gives you mannequin skin. I don't know how else to describe it. Mannequin skin in a spray bottle. Okay. Wow. I just picked up two. All right. This <laughs> Surratt Dewdrop Foundation. I have it in the shades three and four. I would say three definitely is the one that works for me these days. I've talked about this endlessly, nonstop. If you've been with me for any length of time, you know how much I love the Surratt Dewdrop Foundation. It has a light, light, medium coverage. It has um, like a thin, like a thin lotion kind of consistency. And it has the most incredible finish. It, and this is how I've described it in the past and I can't think of any other way to describe it. So pardon me if I sound like a broken record, but it does this thing where it perfects your skin without the coverage, where I feel like it has like light refracting bits in there so that your skin just looks super smooth, super filtered, just blurred, like all the perfect things, like almost like it gives you like your face an aura. It is so incredible. And it does all of that without a ton, a ton of coverage. I just love that foundation so much because it's, yeah, it's just everything, everything I love in a foundation. And I think I've said this before too, if I would kind of like come up with my dream foundation, it would be this one because of the consistency, the like light, light, medium coverage. And the fact that like it, yeah, it just makes your skin look incredible. Like just totally filtered. That's the Surat Dewdrop Foundation. And then this one is new. This is the Chanel uh, number one de Chanel. Uh, and I have it in the shade B20. And this foundation is just Lovely. I, I don't, I, that's the only word. Every time I see this, even when I look at the bottle, I'm like, hmm, lovely. It's just, um, you know, it has a light medium coverage. Um, I wouldn't say it's especially long wearing. It's very easy to wear. Um, it gives me like just enough coverage. It gives me just enough smoothing. It blurs my skin a little bit. It's just a great kind of like everyday throw on kind of foundation. And I really, really love it. It's part of their um, like Camellia skincare line. So I do believe there's some skincare uh, ingredients in here as well, like Camellia extract, possibly, if I remember correctly. Anyway, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous foundation. And whenever I talk about this, I probably get the most comments about this particular foundation. I think people are surprised at how much they love this foundation. It is gorgeous. So that is the number one de Chanel. Uh, foundation and the last one, the last one. So let's see, let me make sure. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Yeah. So this is number 15, 
Maybe you thought I forgot, but this is the La Mer Radiant Skin Tint with SPF 30. I just love this. This is uh, just a great summertime throw on kind of easy to wear tinted sunscreen. It is very similar in my mind to this. It's like I can kind of go either way. They both have SPF 30. I believe this has, yeah, same deal. It's like chemical and physical sunscreen in here. Um, the only thing I would say about La Mer versus the NARS, I would say this has maybe a teensy bit less coverage. And I do feel like this leaves my skin feeling a lot softer, probably because it's La Mer, but it leaves my skin a lot softer. There's a, there's a little bit more emollients to it. I would say this is probably better for a wide range of skin types. Um, this, if you have oily, oily skin, I'm not sure that this would work for you. It would probably be too emollient, probably be too glowy, but because I have dry skin, it is fantastic. And you know, once the sun comes out here in Vegas and it starts beating down, my skin starts to feel, I mean, you would think that like, I would just be kind of sweaty, but I feel like my skin just, it gets dried out, it gets irritated. And something like this from La Mer is just very, very calming. It's very soothing. And I, yeah, I just love it. This has been a long time favorite. And I don't think that they, maybe a couple years ago, I don't think that they actually reformulated this. I think they repackaged it, renamed it, and like redid the shade range. But yeah, I've loved this for a very, very long time. Um, and that's it. That is it. Those are my top 15 foundations, again, in no particular order. And yeah. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I would love to hear what some of your favorite foundations are. If they're ones that I need to try out, please let me know. Um, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.